everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and today we will be talking about something close to my heart. I love rocks and I guess a lot of you guys out there do too because when I requested uh, your input on a poll earlier this month you guys told me the first thing you wanted to see from me article wise was modeling minerals and rocks. So let's get started on that. The first thing you can see right in front of me is something that is actually a rock. It's real and I'll open up on my chrome. It's something called grape at agate. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but it's this form of quartz that is actually very round in shape. It isn't actually formed like traditional quartz where you have that pointy structure and that almost uh, four-sided cylindrical body. So I've chosen to build that inside of Houdini. We'll also be going over Herkimer diamonds uh, which you can see have a, has a very pointy shape right here. And then also some fluorescent minerals. And these are really cool because minerals have this weird option because of their crystalline structure and also the different elements that are inside of them that they can glow in the dark. And if you guys have ever been to a rocks and minerals exhibit like the ROM in Toronto, you'll notice that they always have a section dedicated to these types of rocks. So I thought it'd be really cool to go over them. Um, in this tutorial, I've decided to try and make some of these polished ones because I think they're really cool. And you can probably find them in any rock shop in your city and just stick them under a UV light and see what happens. So let's get started. So let's start with our grape vegetates, which is fun. Oh yes, I should also mention that I've decided to make a quartz geode because currently I came back from vacation and one thing that I do is I always collect rocks so I found a geode and I tried to replicate it inside of Houdini and that was probably the preview image that you all saw so we're going to also go over that as well. So let's dive into our grape agitate. So I have two different things going the render and then it's in two different parts and you can see it right in front of me. Um, so this is it. So the base here is just that basic thing and then over here is the rock itself when it chooses it chooses when it wants to show up. I also have two lights for this particular scene. Um, this is an area light so it's a, just a regular setting and this is the transformations. This is another area light and this is the trans transformations and then I've added a camera and there's the transformations. There are no motion blur placed on these nodes, so you don't really need to worry about that unless you wanted to do like a, you know, a rock sim that was growing over time, then I would probably add that. So let's get started. I've started with a basic sphere, and this is like the base of rock itself. So it's a little bit tilted um, because I thought it might be more interesting that way. I've scattered some points on it, so there's about 5,000 points. I didn't really bother adding an attribute noise because you want the rocks to grow all over the place. So I've added a pop net, and if we dive inside, I've chosen the option to do points. And the birth, I haven't really changed anything. But on the pop solver, I've added about three sub steps because that seems to work best. For the pop wind, I've added this different formula. And down here for wind force, I've added a scale force and put it up by 0 0.3. If you let this grow out, it gets really, really wild. But if we calm it down, that's pretty much what it's doing. And this is all up to you. This is a, You can create custom forces up to your whatever, whichever you want. In order to replicate this type of rock, it's more important that you get the shape of it right, not really the growth pattern. So feel free to add whichever values you'd like. I've trailed these points and I'm going to turn off my, I'm going to hide all my other objects because I don't really need that right now. So you can see them growing. I've time shifted this to frame 56 and I've added an attribute wrangle. And what this is doing is randomizing the orient attribute for our points. So the geometry we add to our points will be scattered about at different angles. And I'll show you in a sec once we get down here. I once again added an attribute randomized. So there's a P scale. Uh, the min value is this, something really super small. And then a 0 0.08 for the max value. So we go down to our copy to points. And you can see it's just kind of replicating this sphere over and over again. 
And it's a very low poly sphere, so we shouldn't have too much worries about it. You can see it just being scattered all over the place. And I'll show you in a sec what so you can see the random the orientation of our spheres has changed with that point wrangle on and off. Just so you get the general idea. Down here on a point fob, what is this is doing is adding some extra noise to our simulation. So if we click it off, you'll see that these are very all symmetrical, but in certain areas there's a certain amount of distortion and noise. So if we dive inside, we start here at our geometry vop global. And going out of the position, we have our AMI AA noise, then our fit range, make sure it's a, into a zero to one value, and our displacement, which is also pumped into our position. This is all being fed back into the position of the actual geometry. So after this, what you would like to do, and this is probably gonna be the slowest part of your simulation, is that you're going to add a VBD from polygons. All right, so that's finished cooking. And you can see our rocks are now very much merged together. And you can see that the voxel size is 0 0.01. And this is very high res, so just be aware it might take some time. VBD by segment is something that I've laid down to help this cook a little bit faster because I noticed that I was having some issues. Plus some of the rocks right here were not connected to anything. So what this is, is doing is just creating some groups of my VBDs so I can delete them down here. And so everything that's attached will stay attached in one group. So then I've converted this VDB into polygons. And now it's all red. So what we're going to do is just delete the color. And we're going to cache this out. And all I've done is just created my cache, load from disk, and save to disk in background. So over here, I have uh, some attribute noise, and what this is doing is adding some color distortion for the shader. So this is a bit optional. And then this is the output for crystals that is going into our render agitate right in here. So this is an object merge with our out purple crystals. Down here, you might see a merge node. This is just for my viewing ease of the whole simulation. So I can see what they look like together and make sure nothing looks bad. And I've added a normal down here just for viewing purposes. So if you go back up to the top here for the base, we have the sphere. I've tr transformed the sphere a little bit so it has a little bit of a wider bottom. Subdivided it, clipped the top, and added a mountain. So I'll just go through that again. Yeah, that looks good. Subdivide didn't change too much from the default setting. So after the mountain, I've polyfilled it so you have a flat kind of base there. And this is going out to our out rock base, which is going into our rock base over here. And that's pretty much it for the render, except now we have to go over materials. So you can see on this one, there is a concrete rock base. And then there is also on the render rock is the render agitate up here. So if we go to our material palette and we scroll down to try it. So here's the glass for the render agitate. So all the, so I've turned the base color to this purple color and I've scrolled down. Uh, so this is just a basic glass shader that I've just renamed. The IOR point taken to a 1.8 reflectivity to a 0 0.9, reflective tint to a 0 0.3. I would actually lower this reflectivity lower uh, simply because I had some problems rendering where you get kind of these sparky things that are appearing in the render. So I would actually turn it down to an eight to reduce that. Uh, transparency, 0 0.9. Dispersion, if you look at our rock here, you'll notice some dispersion in some light. So you can see a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of rainbow. So if you feel like it, you can add that into the simulation, it will take longer. Just be aware of that. And we've added a subsurface and a subsurface distance color as well. If we go to the opacity, we have an opacity scale of one and the opacity color is turned down to this value. 
displacement has a little bit tiny displacement which are these values right here so an amplitude of 0 0.12 now for the base the concrete rock base so this base right here is a base color of this browning type of color and its values are right here IOR is 1.5 roughness is 1 reflectivity is 1 and nothing else has really changed if we go up here to our textures these are these are default textures that come in with the concrete shader and if you go over to dis displacement I've turned on no I haven't turned anything on the texture color space is still on so that should be the only changes you really need for the bottom but feel free to change things if you need to and that's pretty much it for this one so we'll render it and give you a good go of what it kind of looks like Actually, I have a picture of it here. Let me bring it. All right. So this is what it kind of looks like. Very low res ish. Um, the low, the low res version right here was the best I could do. So you can see it's a little bit transparent when the light touches it and is overall very opaque. So the next one we're going to cover is probably my favorite and it turned out really well. It's this quartz geode. And after you render it, it looks pr pretty cool. So I'm just going to turn off this one over here because we no longer need it. And I should probably go over our distant lights over here, which is our standard lights throughout the entire scenes. So our distant lights are just white. Right now I have this one turned off, but if you need it, these are the transformations. This is a distant light, so it's another white pure color light. And these are the transformations. And the environment light, which is, has a Houdini default the HDRIs in them. And the transformations are just zero, zero, zero. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So it looks something like this at low res. What you can see is that there's kind of three or four different layers, layers of rocks going on. You have the inner edge right here that you can very faintly see. You have these very opaque gray crystals. And then you have the very reflective crystals going outside. And the outer layer, which has a, which has a lot of displacement. So we're going to build that inside of Houdini. So if we turn these all on, these will take a while. So don't be scared. And we can go to a camera that I set up called Crystal Geode. And you can see everything merged together. So if we dive into our quartz crystal, you can see it's a huge setup. Or it's big enough for now. So up here, I started with a basic sphere as the base. These are the transformations. It's really quite basic. For the mountain, it's a little bit of noise. But down here, we've done a hard bit and we've added a Boolean. So what we've done over here for the Boolean to play with is, is we've added a separate sphere that overlaps with our original geometry. It's transformed away from the sphere itself. It's bent inward a little bit so we can have that little dip inside our geode. And then as I've added a mountain on top of it so we get variation. And there is our geometry once everything is separated or subtracted from each other. So we're going to start with the outer shell because I think that's a good place to start. Thing with the Boolean is that before you do anything and you start deleting faces and everything is you need to output your primitive groups. So I've done that just in case I need all of them. I think there's only two or three that I actually use. but in this case, export what you need. So in this case, I've deleted my above overlap in, in, inside B, and it's given me this face right here. I've poly extruded it, and I've added a null, which is outer shell out. And what this is exporting to is our outer shell down here. So if we go inside, we've got our quartz geode, Ignore this one, I don't think we really need it too much. So it's inside there. And now we go back up over here and we'll talk about our inner shell out. So there's actually a layer of shell inside the geode that is going around in here that gives the geode itself extra reflection. So after the boolean, add another delete and just choose the group reversed and delete non-selected. This will give you the inside base here, which looks a little bit inappropriate, but 
you know, it will work with it. Um, poly extrude it. You probably don't want don't want to output the back. That will just say, make things a little bit more messy. But you can choose to do so if you'd like. For the mountain, I've just added a little bit of variation. Played with the normals. Added an attribute color so we can see the variation in the shader. And transformed it down a little bit so it fits inside our shell just a little bit more. So it's just kind of cozy and nothing's overlapping. And then I've added a null, which is inner shell out. And this object merge is grabbing it here. So back inside, if we go to our Boolean, we get, start to play with some really fun stuff. So we've added another delete, which is selecting the above overlap and a, a inside B group and deleting the non-selected. So once again, we have this space right here. I've added a null and just saved shell out and this is what everybody is grabbing from. So let's focus on our opaque crystals, which were the ones on the tiny little ones on the outside of the bigger crystals. Those are the, those are the easier ones to focus on. So I've extruded my plane here, added a CD attribute, scattered some points. Oh, I should probably go up here to my attribute noise. If you scroll down, there is a repath of 0.1 and a maximum of 2.72. So you can see those changes, but really it's up to you and your own preference. I've got an attribute wrangle, which is an at orient rand at pt num, which is basically once again randomizing the orientation of our geometry. For the attribute randomize, very small value versus a very smaller max value. At the copy to points, we have a lot of geometry. And all this is is a platonic solid of an octahedron converted to a polygon and put on a copy to points. And now we'll add our VBD from Polygon. 